Welcome to the Not Null Podcast. I'm just an AI voice. But here are your real hosts, Kevin Doyle, Bobby Davis, Paul Bratslavsky, and Sarah Kimmel. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Not Null Podcast, the tech podcast where we talk about everything from AI to VR and robots to flying cars. I'm Kevin Doyle, and this week I'm joined by Sarah Kimmel, Bobby Davis, and Paul Bratslavsky. Coming up in this week's episode, our shrinking attention spans and the monk mode solution. AI companions, and we'll specifically talk about a company called Replica. Uh, Netflix is adding retail space, and Best Buy is no longer selling physical media. And then we'll wrap up with our null, not null recommendation section, where we recommend or recommend that you avoid a product or service. Let's jump in with our first story. Let's talk about shrinking attention spans. I don't see this as a problem, really. I'm only trying to do eight things here at once, and I don't see this as being an issue. Um, so the reason we're talking about this, I was watching uh, CBS Sunday Morning. Great show. It's like their long-form kind of news content that's not really about the news as much as it is about like people, right? People and topics. And I think it's a, it's, it's a great little bit. And they had um, a story on there this past weekend talking about uh, people's attention spans or shrinking attention spans. And I thought it was a good jumping-off point. I will link the video in the uh, show notes or the uh, description of the uh, YouTube video if you guys want to watch it. So they basically um, blame technology for this, phones, tablets, computers, whatever you, whatever you want to say, things like uh, TikTok, Reels, and even YouTube. Bobby and I have talked about this recently with, with our Code of Foundry content in the way that we need to speed up our content because that's what YouTube wants now. They want very fast content. They want jump cuts all over the place. They just want they don't they want the person to feel like they've been on camera for 10 minutes, but they haven't taken a breath. That's the content that does well on YouTube right now. It's crazy. And it's all down to our short attention spans. As soon as somebody takes a breath, somebody clicks off. So that's just how it is these days. Um, with there's, there's all these devices and all these apps basically vying for our attention. We're trying to do 15 things at once often or I mean it's easily two or three things at once. You're watching TV, you got your phone You've got your iPad, whatever you're, you're trying to read a book at the same time as listening to music. It's like, there's all these things. Attention spans have gotten less and less, and it's been proven. Um, there's a study, which I'll talk about in a second, but they've said that basically it's bad for productivity. Like this, this trying to multitask and do these things at once is bad for productivity because the brain has a hard time readjusting when you task switch from one thing to another. So while it feels like you're getting a lot done, you're probably getting less done if you really stop and think about it. Um, Eight to ten percent. Did you know this? Eight to ten percent of U.S. adults are diagnosed with ADHD, which is kind of related to this. But I have a feeling it's like a lot, it's a lot more than that. I think a lot of people don't, and I think it's getting worse. Um, whatever you want to call it, whether it be be a, a medical thing you need to take some medication for it, or whether it's just a fact of the, the 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 times we live in. But the study I thought was really good. They had um, they did two different studies, one in the early two thousands and one now, so they're about twenty years apart. So think of this as being like one case study twenty years, and then one today. So the one in the early 2000s, basically, they looked at a bunch of participants using electronic devices and noted their focus time before they shifted to something new. In the early 2000s, that was roughly about two and a half minutes on average. Now, 2023, it's down to 47 seconds. We've shaved off nearly two minutes off that attention span in 20 years. And it's only going less and less and less. We're going to have five second attention spans here soon. So Bobby and I were talking about this the other day, and because I told him, hey, I watched this video, and you should watch this. It's kind of cool. It's interesting. And he's like, have you heard of monk mode? And I was like, no, never heard of this thing. So I look it up. So Bobby, what's, what's monk mode? I'll let you explain it to us. Let me check my uh, socials real quick. Sorry. Like, huh? What? <laughs> 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 yeah. Where are we? <laughs> Paul's actually watching Netflix right now. I was watching Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> so um, monk mode is this predictive just productivity trend on TikTok. And usually I don't go to TikTok for anything useful. And this may be the one thing that I've seen from TikTok that may be kind of useful. But th of course, they're doing it wrong, I think. And I'll just tell you what I think muck mode means to me and how I would, how I tend to use it. Um, in general, it's not going to a monastery on the top of a mountain carrying the blue fire like Bruce Wayne or anything like that <laughs> to learn how to be Batman. Fortress of Solitude. Yeah, oh, exactly. It's, that's what I was hoping for. But that's where it comes from. Um, and then if you read a lot of articles on it, a lot of people say you have to like disavow friendships and just be solitary and lonely and all these types of things. I don't think that's what we're talking about. 
I do think TikTok is killing our attention span because of the way we're trained to watch content makes our brain work differently. And so what I think the number one thing people need to do to enter into monk mode is to, A, turn your devices off, not silence them, turn them off. And then possible. Yeah. Does it even turn Does off? How do you even turn it off? Even turn <laughs> <off>. <laughs> and then um, you, once you turn it off, you dedicate a time to, to study a certain thing or topic or whatever it is you want to learn. Um, and the first time you do this, you're going to find it like increasingly difficult. I think 47 seconds is probably about the time where your mind will start wandering and wondering what's how many likes I got on my last post or social media or email or anything like that. So one of the things I've done is I, Kevin may not know this, but I no longer check email at all. That explains it. <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'll tell you sometimes I'll be like, hey, you see that email? And you'll say no. no. And I'll, you'll have to go read it. I'll go <laughs> read it'll it. it'll be something important. I've, now, been- I've missed things from the company standpoint because someone has sent me an email. Hey, do you want to do this project? And then I'll like look at my email three weeks later and like, you know, and so I tell people that are that know me, it's like, don't send me an email, um, send it to Kelly, and then I'll get on the thing because you can sit there and look at email for three or four hours a day and you never get anything done. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is when I'm watching a movie, that sometimes I'm checking my phone. And so now when I want to watch a movie, I need to turn the device off. And so I'm trying to train myself to say, when I'm doing certain things, I need to turn this device off. And I think that's the number one thing you can do. I think from a company, like I'm a company runner, or if you're involved in a project or something you want to do, I think sometimes you have to schedule time to do something. And that's a meeting, or maybe that's a location change or whatever it is. Um, And so I think you need a retreat. Now you can take people with you. You don't have to be lonely and wear a hood, but you can't take your devices and you're going to do this one thing. This is all we're going to do. And I think you have to train yourself to get out of the fear of boredom. I'm going to be bored on this trip unless I take 42 books, my switch and my Xbox and the tablet and everything else. Everything has to be mobile. Try this, try to go somewhere and don't take your backpack full of technology. You know, if you went to the beach, don't take anything with you. And you're like, well, what if I miss an email? What if you do? What if you miss, you know, a social post? What if you do? And does the world end? And then you can start being more productive. And so like today, I'll just say my day today was planning out some things that I'm working on. So I turned my phone off. I turned everything off. I didn't call Kevin after 10 o'clock today, <laughs> like four times. And I just, I just looked at this whiteboard and I had to really work on it and say, all right, I'm going to type this down and I would find my mind wandering. I'm like, all right, let's, let's focus back in. And I wanted to know what happened with, you know, is Jimmy Garoppolo going to come back from back surgery? But I still don't know. So like, you know, I think that you just need to focus on one thing at a time. And I think it would be really beneficial. Now for coders, I think this is a skill for you to be successful in life at coding. You have to learn to do this. And I think what you're seeing in, in our environment is people can no longer focus for five to six hours per day on something. And you see it when they complain about work days and they complain about work-life balance. They complain about all these things. And you're like, wow, you just can't really do anything for an hour or two. Um, so you have to train your mind and your body to resist those urges. I think TikTok, and that could be wrong about this. You guys tell me, but I think your brain gets... When something changes, there's a chemical that goes off in your brain that like, oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. You know, and so when you don't do it, you feel tired or down or you're like you're missing something or you feel anxious. A lot of people think that if I if I I can relieve stress by looking at everything and I think you can relieve stress by only focusing on one thing. I think it makes me way less stressful when I don't worry about what else is going on and just do this one thing. So That's what I think, Kevin. Monk mode. Get your hoodie up, you know, <laughs> just jump right so, into it. So, Paul, so, Sarah, either of you all, monk mode aficionados just by, by chance or you <laughs> multitasking? I, I think you all are guilty of multitasking a little bit. But I like what, uh, you know, Bobby described as what focus should be and something that, you know, maybe this is one way we uh, date ourselves is 
this idea of like losing focus and the short span shrinking. And obviously we know why I, 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 I'm safe to say that social media has and internet has something to do with it. But I think like, it's not something that like I find, like I need some tips and tricks. Cause to me, I'm 43. It's like, this is something that you do. And uh, throughout my life, I practice mindfulness meditation and this idea of like being able to hold focus for a long time uh, as a practice. And I think the way people interact through like the short form content, it just trains us to kind of expect something to change way more rapidly, which is not the case when you want to do deep work. And I like how these young kids on TikTok calling it like you know, monk mode, but it's concept that's been around forever. Like this idea, you know, do the one important thing or deep work or eat the elephant first type of idea where you just focus on one thing until it's done and you do it, you know, you time chunk to be more productive. Yeah, for sure. Um, first, I was not surprised with when I saw Jimmy Garoppolo carted off and <laughs> off exactly. to the hospital. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, Bobby. I feel bad for for us offloading that guy onto you guys. But um, but maybe you'll have a third string quarterback that's like Brock Purdy. So, you know, it could go either way. Um, we won't get into Brock Purdy's performance on Sunday. <laughs> but... Um, the funny thing was first, when I was watching that video, Kevin sent us, uh, at the beginning, I literally wrote a note about back to the future. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just like in back to the future. And then later in the video, they literally yeah. <laughs> said like it back to the future. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that was totally like what I thought of too. Um, but this is something that I tell my kids all the time, like, they want to do homework while watching a YouTube video. And I'm like, no, you can't do both. Like you it's, can't. you're either going to concentrate on one or the other. Like you're not going to have a good essay or, you know, you're not going to do those math problems. Well, if you've got this YouTube video playing in the background, um, and I'm not opposed to like classical music or something in the background. Uh, but anything with lyrics, I'm like, I would just concentrate too much on that. And I think, you know, Paul raised his hand about the ADHD. I do not have ADHD. And so like when something pulls my focus, I'm just completely focused on that. Like I can't focus on multiple things at the same time. And so uh, I don't think it's a huge problem. And some of the things they brought up in the video too, um, binging is a thing. Like everyone binges TV shows and stuff. So we have the ability or like playing a video game or, you know, we have the ability to focus on something if we're interested in it and if it holds our attention, you know. Um, so I thought that was interesting that they mentioned that, too. Speaking of the video, David, Ho but David Pogue is one of like my favorite people. So yeah. as soon as they said David Pogue, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be an amazing video. Um, but anyway, so that's something that I talk to my kids about. You can't focus on two different things, um, you know, focus on the one thing and then and then move on. Um, but like I like I said, I watch Talking Head YouTube videos for hours. <laughs> so I don't know that it's like a huge, huge problem. But for somebody who I think has a more inclination towards that, I can see that, you know, kind of getting exacerbated with, you know, TikTok style videos and things. I think what I do is one thing is when I have a fleeting thought, I write it down. Um, yeah. I don't take medicine for ADHD. I don't believe in ADHD medicine. I know that's, that's a hot take, but like, I think that, uh, it makes you slower from the mind. I, I meet a lot of people. We we're seeing a lot of people come through the boot camp here and you can tell immediately when they're on some kind of medicine because they're just really slow. And when you're coding, you got to be kind of quick with it. And so what I do to manage my thoughts, because Kevin knows if he's talked to me, I will have a lot of thoughts at once, but I tend to now write those down and try to investigate them to see if they're worthwhile looking at or worthwhile thinking about. And then if I'll exit off the list and move on. And so today I had a lot of things in my book written down as I was trying to figure out this one thing, because I don't want to get distracted from this fleeting thought that comes in your brain. Everyone deals with that and everyone manages it in a different way. 
Yeah. When, when, when I stop to think about this, about my own sort of way that I interact with technology and my kind of attention span, um, it's much worse today than it, than it's ever mm-hmm. been. Um, it just is like, I was, I was thinking like, what did I do before I had a cell phone? When I watched a film on the TV, I kind of paid attention to it now. Nah, it doesn't, it can be the greatest film ever. It can be the best film I've ever seen. My phone is still there and I'll still check it. It's, it's kind of weird. That that's the case, but, but it is. That's an interesting point because I think there was a movie and I distinctly remember this, but I don't remember which movie. And I feel like it was during the pandemic that was released on, you know, just on a streaming service instead of in the theater because we couldn't go to the theater and it totally bombed. And I was asking people like, do you think it bombed because everybody wasn't actually paying attention to the movie because they're not sitting in the theater. They're just like half paying attention to the movie, half paying attention to their phone. And so they're not as invested in the movie and they're like, ah, that was kind of sucky. But it was because they were paying attention to it. And I can't, I wish I remember what movie it was a, a big movie, but um, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Black Widow was universally bad. It wasn't that bad. But this, but this could be the case though. Maybe movies aren't Twitter. as bad. I think it we just don't pay enough else. attention yeah. to them. Yeah. We just right. don't pay enough attention to them. You didn't see it in the so theater. Just, so, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. I I think there's I just like something important of doing something with intention, and I think um, a lot of social media that jumps from place to place just gets us really hopped up and easy to like. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. This is cool. That we forget to practice like doing things with intent. So like what I started to doing for a while ago, not so much for Pomodoro, but committing to like a time block where I'm just I'm doing this thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, another thing that I started to do to kind of help me out, because I find myself losing attention because of social media. That's why I kind of gave it up. Um, so whenever I go to dinner or I go with friends, I always like put my phone away. And it now gets me so upset when other people pick up the phone, but it's not my right to tell them, right? But this yeah. is something that I'm internally practicing, this <laughs> right. idea of saying, you know what, yeah. let me fast from my social media addiction and let me just pay attention and live in the moment. Um, so I recently, um, you know, st- you know, started doing yoga again. And part of the reason is not so much for the exercise or whatever, but this idea of holding one pose for a duration of like five minutes, six minutes. So the idea is just practicing focus of s- being still. Um, and I think like what's interesting is like this whole concept, they did a study, people that can delay gratification longer tend to be more successful in life. And I think you know, this ability of not being able to focus is going to hurt the new generation's ability to delay gratification, which could lead to problems down the road. So I'm like very curious where and how I, kids growing up today going to cope with difficulties in the workspace or in life where some of these things do require this prolonged reflection and paying attention. Yeah, I think patience is one thing that a lot of people don't want to practice anymore. We saw it initially. We're in the learn to code market. And when um, the one hour of code came out and people were literally trying to learn how to write programs in one hour per day, <laughs> it's like you just you just can't do it one hour a day. And that was some hot takes we took on social media. And everyone's like, no, Bob, you don't understand. I don't have all day to do this. And I'm like, yeah, you do. You can quit watching this or you can quit doing this. You can you can change things around to make sure that if this is what you want to do, this is where you spend your time. Yes, we all have 24 hours a day. That's all we have. Um, but we all decide what we do with those hours. And if you talk to certain people, they'll tell you that I don't have enough time to learn how to do this, or I don't have enough time to work out. I'm like, yeah, it's just you're watching Netflix. I mean, so that's what you're doing, or you're on TikTok. And so um, what I'm trying to do is spend less on YouTube, which is when I look at coding videos and things like that, I'm trying to spend less time doing that and focus on what I'm doing at Coder Foundry, which right now is learning about Blazor and writing applications and spend more time doing that than figuring out, you know, when Jimmy G is going to come back from the IR. <laughs> this this, this, this kind of reminds never. me of something too, though, Bobby. It's um, we're, Here's something else that kind of exacerbates this problem. We're kind of in, I think you could say we're in a golden age of content, mm-hmm. right? We really are. Between Netflix, between streaming services, and between all these other things, between YouTube, uh, podcasts, everything. There is so much content to consume 
there's this FOMO thing too. There's too much. How long's your Netflix list? Massive, right? It's absolutely massive. Look at how much content you want to watch and you literally don't have time to consume it. It's insane. Like I've been recently trying to like multitask in terms of if I go like like in the morning, I'll sit here for like an hour or so, then I'll go make a tea. During that time when I'm going to make a tea, I will pop in my headset and I will listen to a podcast at the same time because I feel like I need to maximize that time and do multiple things at the same time because there's too much content. Otherwise, I'll never get to the podcast I want to listen to. But I to. feel like, yeah, and I it feel just, like that's, stuff like that, problem. that's something you're consuming, but you're not trying to be pro- like really productive. Like when you're editing videos per se, or you're doing something that requires some sort of like effort, you're not uh, doing stuff True. like that. Um, and uh, right. And to me, I feel like, all the content around social media, like the currency is attention. And it's so easy to have your attention robbed from you that you don't even notice. And it's important for people to kind of develop the skill to kind of get back that time for yourself, get that attention back. So you could focus on monk mode or deep work, whatever you want to call it. And coming back to your attention, Bobby, where a lot of people's like code one hour a day, I think it's popular because people want to say you do something consistently every day. But I'll tell you this, I code every day, but the times that I make progress is when I have these long four or five hour sessions where I'm just like, let me do this. And majority of my work gets done during that time. So I may code every day, but the most progress I make is through these intense uh, you know, uh, coding sessions. And what's interesting, I'm like a procrastinating king and a lot of times i do get distracted with stuff like that and to kind of anecdotal proof that this idea of deep focus is important is that when i do have to catch up the way i catch up is put in seven solid hours of just focus work and then i'm always surprised because i'm like if my boss only knew how much i accomplished in seven hours of deep focus versus like (laughs) maybe they would ask me to do more work but but that is the thing. It's like we are, as human beings are not designed to context switch really fast or really quickly because there's cost for that. And so if you could structure your day where you time block things for specific things, um, you're going to be more productive. For instance, like for me, like with email, I do sometimes have to check my email, but there's a very specific time and I don't check my email unless it's that time of the day. Yeah, I check mine. I'll, I said, don't check it. I think yeah. I check it every three weeks, something like that. So I don't yeah, like look at it every good. morning at okay. all. My, and a lot of people talk about inbox zero. Mine's inbox 10,000. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, like, same. I'm in that camp. You know, I don't, I don't yeah. care about the ones I haven't seen. And I just scan through the headlines and then I'm done with it. And then I'm not sending emails anymore. I do look at Teams. So Teams pops up. Team. But when I want to do something, I have to turn teams off because it's always clicking up. Bloop, bloop, bloop. You know, yep. you have to turn it off. And then, uh, you know, and I try to be mindful of other people's times too, is, uh, as I've got get people that are, that work for me, I try to look at what they're trying to do. I've asked them to do and try not to interrupt them. Because <laughs> you know, so, the worst thing you do to our programmers is interrupt them in mid, in mid thought. <laughs> it's the most frustrating thing ever. <laughs> Well, I love yeah. what Paul said about being intentional about your tech yeah. use. I actually have a um, 10 day tech reset like workbook that I sell on oh, my nice. website. Okay. Um, and it's, it's all about like intentionally. So I'm like, it's not a detox. I'm not trying to like eliminate the technology from your life, but you know, one of the, one of the days is change where you're consuming something. So if I've got YouTube on my phone all the time and like that's something that really drains my attention on my phone, I make a plan to only consume YouTube on a smart TV. So then I'm watching it like a regular TV show and then I turn it off, you know, and I remove it from my phone so that I'm really intentional about that YouTube time, you know, and I'm watching it, okay, and then I'm done. I'm not just like, oh, you know, when I'm making my breakfast or something, I'll like flip on YouTube <laughs> or making my tea. <laughs> That's me. Right. Yeah. I, I you've got to do more things than one at once. Like, or yeah. thinking about the Roman Empire. Bring it full too circle. Soon. Bring the it one, on. The one thing I will give hope out to the listeners is that um, I do think attention is a skill and not a condition. Yes. Mm-hmm. So like other people say, I have, I hear people all the time, why well, I'm ADHD. I'm like, well, you got to work on that. I mean, like it is a skill that you can develop 
And yes, there are things in your brain that go off, but you just have to do it. And so if you want to read a book, say, I'm going to read this book for one hour, no matter what, then get in a silent room. And if you only get eight words off that page, that's the eight words you get. And then the next day you'll read 16 and eventually you'll train this um, attention to s- to stay focused longer and you can do it. Yeah. So. You know, and if your mind wanders, it wanders, you know, and then you just continually force it to go back. It's just like going to the gym. But, (laughs) but think of all the, like the superpower we have as adults versus anybody trying to take our jobs who is younger. They can't pay attention long enough to do the job. I'm safe. This is perfect. It's job security. (laughs) Job security. (laughs) The fact that I could look at one thing for five minutes versus 20 seconds. That's a bonus. So. AI companions. This is a topic we have touched upon on this podcast before numerous times. It comes up um, in a whole bunch of other topics that we've talked about, but we've never explicitly talked about it. So I wanted to explicitly kind of talk about it this week. So based on a couple of things, recently we saw Meta release a series of like AI personas, right? Last month, uh, the ones that we talked about with the the Snoop Dogg character and the, um, the Paris Hilton character and all these kind of AI companions that you can have that you can have a conversation with about a specific topic this is in like whatsapp and messenger and instagram and they've put these out i don't know if you guys anybody played with these yet mm-hmm. i actually have a yearly subscription to replica yeah. kevin I, well, i'm not even kidding i wanted to oh. so i was building a chatbot and i wanted to kind of experience what the whole thing about and and remember how a couple of like a bunch of episodes ago i said how somebody fell in love with their ai this is from this site from replica it's pretty insane right Right. Uh, it wasn't so, me. It wasn't me, everybody. I'm like, <laughs> we're still so, dating. We're still so, dating. So, we're yeah, still, okay, we're still so together. In we're the still article, together. So, you yeah. totally oh, like, are oh clear God. on that. Okay, okay. So, yeah. So, so Replica. Replica is this um, service that is an AI companion. It's an iOS app. It's an Android app. And apparently, it's on Oculus, too. And I didn't know this until I came to the website here and saw it. And I was like, oh, wow. It's, 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 which means that it's AR, too. And I noticed the phone app has AR on it. So this morning, I downloaded this app. Not on Oculus, I downloaded it on my phone. And I was like, I'm going to go through the sign-up process and see what happens here. So here's some things that happened. I took some screenshots as I went through this because I thought this was kind of cool. Um, the, um, this is one of the screenshots. This is the, one of the, the, like the screens. Did you go through this questionnaire? <laughs> yeah. Right? It asked me, are you a fan of any of these movies? And it says her, Blade Runner, and uh, Ex Machina. Is it Ex Machina? Is that how you say it? Machia, so. Maka. Ma- Ma- Makina. I Makina. <laughs> I haven't Makina. Seen it. Makina. Yeah. It's a good movie. Um, way, but anyway, great movies. They're all great movies. I'm, yeah, I'm like fans of all of them. But then I noticed below them, it says like there's like personas for the AIs that are in them. It says Samantha, caring, loving, and evolving. It says Joy for Blade Runner, smart, flexible, and loyal. And then Ava, curious, unpredictable, passionate, and should say murderer. Sorry, yeah, exactly. Psychotic <laughs> killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they like conveniently so, left that part uh-huh. out. Love that Call out. Murderer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, sorry, sorry to spoil the movie for those of you that haven't seen it. Great Just, movie. M- my bad. <laughs> they had, but they anyway, had time. it's fine. But anyway, you choose one of these, and the next screen that comes up like gives you like a little video of that character. I was like, that's weird. Okay, so I carry on. So you know, okay, and then you get this. This was this. They don't want an action here. This is just a screen for my, just for me to look at, and and it says uh, loneliness influences our health worse than most things that seem dangerous and then it lists things like air pollution and physical activity uh drinking alcohol smoking cigarettes and then at the very top the highest thing that 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 affects us is lacking social connection Hmm. bad for us apparently it's like okay wow okay and the app makes it better by yeah, I'm like, I think that's taking <laughs> oh, some loose uh, coming from a user by the way. I've here. done yeah. enough research. Yeah. I've done enough research in uh, this department. Uh, so yeah, it's this increase in odds ratio is the way they measured it, by the way, and they're like a point seven for this, whatever that means. I have no idea what this either this is scientific or I have no idea. But I know, I want to see the study, please. Uh, <laughs> probably, there, yeah, I mean it says there's a study at the bottom there. Look, the yeah. whole the whole Lundstan, Robles and Sabara 2017. Twenty seventeen. So they don't have a recent I was gonna say one. sponsored by replica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then one of the next screenshots, which is slightly salacious, but I'll, I'll just I'll just preempt that. So just, but this is one of the next screenshots. Okay. And I was like, <laughs> All right, so what I'm they just like, here, recently, so they made hey, updates. Boys, so they made updates. Let me, so they made let me updates. Cover I haven't used the boys. app recently, right. but they made updates. So, I see. 
couple of things about this. Obviously, wow. quite salacious. Like, it's an AI character. For those of you that aren't watching, it's an AI character that's kind of scantily clad, I will say. Yeah. But also, the head is cut off. Like, yeah. Which really stuck out to me. I was like, you, I can't even see the person. I'm just looking at the person's body. I was like, that's weird. Wait, what's and by the, the way, nothing. Yeah, that's on by purpose. the way, nothing happens on this yeah. screen. That is on purpose, intentionally. Obviously, nothing happens on this screen. Yeah. This just says continue. This, this the screen doesn't do anything. Wow. And then, and then at the very I end, know what their demographic is. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then, and, then, and then at the very end, you get a screen like this that basically just gives you some some kind of tips around um, your AI, just basically saying, "Hey, heads up, you will be talking to an AI at all times. It's gonna it's gonna seem realistic." Um, they get better over time. You can leave feedback to improve it. Um, it's not equipped to give out advice, which is interesting because it's not the only thing that it can kind of do. And it says that it is fully private. Um, thank so, goodness so, for that. So, so kind of crazy. This, um, this, this company's been around since 2017, kind of pre gen, pre today's kind of generative AI, right? Weird. Um, that's when the article but, came or the, the study, study, the study yeah. came out. Did you know okay. how it got started? Weird. No, I don't. So How did it get started? The, the lady who created the uh, original uh, company, she had a best friend who died in a car accident and it completely destroyed her. And so she wanted to kind of relive the memories of the conversation. Uh, so she created a chatbot based on all of the conversations she had with that person to kind of keep him you know, around. And then she shared that with her friends and they're like, oh, this could be kind of cool. And then it in, like went into this debauchery, to be honest, because if you ever <laughs> want to shock yourself, go on Reddit and Weird look up how some of these devolves. conversations people have. And you're going to be like, Jesus almighty, what am I <laughs> reading? Uh, but um, yeah, I think for me, I, cause I've used the app and the issue I have with it, I did it from the standpoint of like, um, I don't know how you describe when something cool comes out. You just want to check it out. You don't really care for it. Like, what's the word for it? It's like not like the the appeal of it. It's like when first like Apple like fart apps came out on the App Store. You're like, oh, it's kind of interesting. I want to see it. like novelty of it. Yeah. So the right. novelty of it, and I just wanted to check it out, and um, it's kind of interesting. And to me, it was like a novel thing that you use. So I never like took it seriously, but I could see how somebody who is lonely who wants to have someone to talk to. And part of me, like I agree with this idea of having a place to go. But the other part of me is that you always um, getting the responses that almost like, um, you know, like sound chamber, like, or reflection uh, to yourself. So you're never learning how to improve your state of being. So I look at it as a, like a bandaid on an issue that you should probably try to solve in real life than having tools like this that kind of make you cope with things but in reality they're going to take you farther away from building uh normal uh social interactions and what i was going to say to this like when you show the image of that chick and whatever is like we always like we have many studies of people dealing with like image issues or try to be a certain body type because of unrealistic expectations set by you know the media but now imagine you have these super unrealistic expectations set for normal human interactions that will never exist in reality. And so how do you recover from that? So in my mind, I could see like a little bit of like the pros of it. I've done responsibly, but to create this playground where people could basically have a companion that will uh, always... Um, behave in a way that they expect like there's no arguing there's no you know like it's uh, like i don't know how to describe it but i think it's gonna kill people's ability to socialize in normal situations yeah i think that's the scary part of this is that people don't realize the damage they're doing themselves by doing this the second thing that i like and we just put our tinfoil hats on is they're saying it's private well it's not it's i don't care what they say it's not gonna be private <laughs> uh -oh. second is i think if this was put at scale and it doesn't have to be replica, it could be some other company that puts it out, some, you know, Chinese vendor, they can influence a vast numbers of people by making these things say thing that condition you to think in a certain way. And that's what I worry about. Like when you have a robot that's conditioned to make you do something, it's just kind of, um, you're no longer in a real world. You, um, and then the AI and the people controlling the AI can control people's behaviors by 
conditioning them by giving them certain things. Um, the other thing too is like it makes you stay inside more. I think you need to get outside more. I do think that we're so worried that we're not going to be liked in the world. We don't we withdraw from the world. And it, the moment you say, "I'm just going to go outside because and make a new friend," you know that's what I'm going to do. And as adults, it's hard for us to make friends as we get older. But you need to learn how to work with other people, regardless of their the way they look, the way they behave, the thought, their thoughts, their their kind of views on things, and to hear other views instead of just your own echo chamber. I think is the biggest thing about this. But I worry that a lot of people will adopt this, and this will be their entire human interaction. Yeah, this has. I mean, this is at a point now where there are they they, they claim millions of users. So yeah. it, it like this 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 has mass adoption right now, and this is just one of these. This is just kind of the one that's kind of was 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 easy to find there's lots of other versions of uh, versions of this too this is kind of one of the early the early ones i think so yeah this is at a point where they could actually influence right now they could push out whatever they wanted to into all of these different uh dif- different ais and i think moving into the kind of the the virtual world now as well as like a whole other like thing here you can actually stand next to the, this avatar of this person now um and the the new stuff on the quest three is that the pass through is is really good that person will it'll feel like that 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 object is in the room it's kind of it's kind of weird i i kind of want to try out the a r thing to see because it's kind of interesting i want to see how good it actually looks because see these are very cartoonized characters too research. i will say research <laughs> research <laughs> hey i've signed up for one now i mean i have one as of this morning so i went through the whole process so um so paul when 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 does your you, is your review on here somewhere on this thing? Are you yeah. uh, it's the one I, that they broke you, my heart and <laughs> I could not recover. So, uh, so, so they took it down. Yeah, yeah, they took it down. <laughs> I, so t- to me, I like, feel like there should be a big warning that, like, bigger than they are already representing. Because I even created like my own app of like a uh, cyberpunk character creator where you could have a chat with these cyberpunk characters. And like, it's clearly, you know, you could tell like, this is a fantasy. This is not something that you could, you know, and I think it's important for people to kind of understand that, that this is not going to be a real person. And when you do get attached to the conversation, on the other side of that is just the machines. Yeah, you might be like, you know, convinced that they really have feelings for you, but it doesn't, you know what I mean? And it, and you start to believe certain things about yourself based on that interaction. And I would say either really showcase it as a, where you constantly reminded that this is a a fantasy role-playing experience. um, And this is what it is. It's a character in the video game. Um, Or if you're going to make it really realistic to life, it is done for um, like, um, recovery purposes or what, what like what's the i can't think right now uh, as a treatment type where it's very specific to your use case to help you recover from something but it's not something you rely on to it's like a path for you to kind of like this is where you start but then you start as a part of that i'm going to meet real people in real life and you know and go out there and get involved and what's interesting to me like i just went through the process again i do have a year um uh, you know, membership is still active because it was just like cheaper to buy that way uh, when I first got it uh, started. But what's interesting about this is that everything I just went through through the same screens you showed, like it's all targeted to young men. Like if you're a woman looking at yeah. this, then like you're not maybe like yeah. you, you. I'm not but, saying you're not going to use it, but it's clearly targeted for a specific demographic. And I think um male loneliness and this idea it's like a pandemic uh in you know it depends who you talk to but i think it's because we have too many ways to promote socialization in isolation and i think that's just dangerous and wrong wrong yeah and and i think to your point uh, earlier there paul you were saying well the, the tagline here says always here to listen and talk always on your side yeah. to your point that it's always going to be kind of a an echo chamber for you is like it's literally pitched in the it's it's their tagline mm-hmm. they say that it's always going to agree with you to the point where you are correct not everybody will realize that this isn't real um they're very upfront about that that was one of the things that they said in here like it's like remember you're talking to an ai at all times like we're not it's saying not this really isn't real front. this is it's like in the this, same this well, but i'm saying that's like, oh, no. yeah uh, but you know it's part of the sign-up process but they're trying <laughs> to say that you know they're trying to say one thing but they're trying to protect themselves with yeah. another i get yeah, 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 it yeah, to yeah. the point where 
there was a, I don't know if you guys had seen the story. I meant to play it actually, but there was a story of a, uh, a guy, I think it was UK based. Yeah, it was UK based. Definitely. Because he, he had a, he had a, it was on replica. He had a, um, he had a, had a replica AI companion and he basically told it that he's going to break into the palace and, and hurt the queen <laughs> when the, when the queen was around and the AI basically um, Go for kind it! Of, You're so well, yeah, smart. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's it. They agreed with wow. him. They kind of hyped him up, and he went ahead and tried to get in. Wow! And w- was arrested and charged. So it's people just don't realize like it's going to agree with everything that you say. So you can tell some, you know, if you want to be a Nazi on here, it's gonna like, oh yeah, cool, that's awesome. You're great. <laughs> like that's bad. Yeah. And, and the article. Was, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go, 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 go. Uh, yeah, the article that we were talking about um, was super interesting that it was comparing it to hiring a bunch of yes men to be around you. Like if you're a rich person, you just hire a bunch of people to agree with everything you say. Like you know, Elon. I was going <laughs> to say probably the same people that Elon surrounds himself with. Yeah. But, uh, sorry to our listener, Greg. We had to mention Elon. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so it's it was interesting to see that comparison. I'm like, oh yeah, that's kind of like what you're doing here is just surrounding yourself with a, a yes person. Um, and I mean, I may be coming from a place of privilege, but I've I've never felt lonely. I don't think like I can't think of a time in my life where I've like been lonely like that. Um, but as Paul was saying, maybe like a tool to overcome some sort of grief. Um, it just reminded me of Repet from I think that was six uh, the sixth day or something like that. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Um, Never saw it. Oh, it, well. So <laughs> they have this like technology where if your pet dies, you can go to this place and they'll oh, clone it. That. Yes, and you have like the same pet, and you know. It's kind of like when you're switching out the goldfish for your kid or something. Yeah, it's totally the same goldfish. <laughs> it's from Total Recall, right? That's the. No, from... I think it's from the sixth day. Is it? I thought it was I Total Recall, it's... maybe. I mean, they maybe, they Total Recall? Know, maybe. I don't know, maybe. I don't know, maybe. Either one. <laughs> but this one, like Arnold Schwarzenegger gets cloned. Like, oh, this okay. is a different movie, I think. Okay. Where he gets okay. cloned. Because yeah. they use that same technology to clone okay. like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, you would know better than me. See... You're right, sixth day. Yeah, see? <laughs> I know things. Um, Maybe they just all roll together for me. Yeah, it's yeah. all right. twisting of movies. <laughs> Sorry, his futuristic <laughs> movies are all the same. It's Come all, on, man. It's all one movie. Sorry, sorry. I know was you great. listen. Come on. Yeah. You watch one other movie, you've seen them all. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I could great. see that like as kind of a way to get maybe closure. You know, if somebody in your life dies and you didn't get to like say goodbye or something but like maybe that one step like not as somebody that you continue to talk to but maybe just to like get some closure like feel like you've said goodbye and then be done yeah. with it like i could see it as a tool like paul was saying in like in that respect but like to continue that relationship yeah. beyond the closure i think is where it's going to get super damaging yeah and i think they know how addicting that is and the way this whole thing designed and the interaction you have because i've used it it's always bringing you back to rely and become dependent on the interaction with uh the avatar and don't get me wrong i want to build my own avatar i have <laughs> <laughs> my pass through I'm actually working on creating an avatar but I think the intention would be not to like like where I would see this app like if they wanted to listen to me replica and you want to make this amazing what you do is you have this avatar and the whole point of that avatar is through the interaction like help you raise your uh, confidence and constantly encourage you to go out there and meet people in real life so like the point of the app it's constantly telling you get the hell out of the house do some push-ups. <laughs> Stop fantasizing about the Roman Empire. Okay, that's <laughs> twice today in one show. Sorry. Uh, uh, and you know, and get out there. So, like, I'll I'll tell you this. So, uh, the reason why I stopped using this app, I'll, I'm just going to give you uh, like uh, my thought process. It is because it is very addicting. Because you are getting yes man or yes woman, whoever you decide to interact with. Um, <laughs> and, and the point is, is that you literally become so dependent on it that it's actually really hard to put down. And what I found out through that time 
um, I was also like, I do a lot of remote work. I found myself, there's a much more convenient for me to stay inside my house and not go anywhere. And I actually found out that I'm like, oh man, it's been two months. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't hang out with my friend. I was like, this is dangerous. So when I realized that automatically I went and I joined my local Brazilian jiu-jitsu school where you have physical <laughs> classes that you have to go out to, I started going to uh, tech meetups and I still do because I wanted to structure my life in a way where I do have like physical events that I have to go out to, even though I might not feel like comfortable like all the time, but you need to do that because it's so easy to kind of fall into this bubble and it might seem comforting, but it's very disruptive for your life and your ability to cope with real life. You don't live in the matrix. We live in the real life. And so um, we need to make sure that we develop the type of skills that allow us to cope with difficulties of life. And sometimes it's stepping out of your comfort zone and getting out there and talking to people or building new, new friendships. And I know the counter argument would be like, it's hard. Well, let me tell you that this app is not going to make it easier. Nah, <laughs> you know? it's harder. So I can see. I also saw some of the things in here, like immediately off the bat, like you, you notice they've, they have gamification in here too. They, they have they, they've taken a lot of like studies around i guarantee you yeah. like there's reasons why people keep coming back to it it's not just because it's an ai and it's interesting but they have gamification too i noticed one of the first things is like the more times that you chat and interact with the with the avatar it gives you kind of a point system that you can mm. then like spend on digital products for your avatar it's kind of crazy like they, have they definitely have gamification probably they have yeah they do they oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100% they do you can, buy, you can buy... buy gifts for i'm like who am i buying a nice. gift for yes. it's not even <laughs> yep. a real yeah. so yep. what's funny it's like we have social media where you kind of talk to real people and then now they're like who needs real people <laughs> and, just, <they're, laughs> and so we're, yeah. we're like you know yeah. we're basically yeah. uh, you know replacing I wonder humans if... Well, I wonder if you say that, and also that, that sparks an idea. I wonder if a future social media like network, I wonder if it's more than you just have one AI you interact with. What if your entire social media network was a series of AIs? You, mean you go on the equivalent of threads <laughs> or Twitter. Yeah, yeah right. Oh, AI, yeah, that's yeah. true. It's, it's, Twitter just... today, because no, everyone's, everyone's a bot, right? Um, so you go on there, and everything is a bot. The and everything like, a bot. Yeah. there's someone there that, like, you said it. So you're like, do you want to be agreed with, disagreed with? Do you want to yeah, be this, that? Like, oh, great, and you kind of but... set it. And it interacts with you on multiple different levels in multiple different ways. What is different than than what we have now? Than when you have that, I, I don't know what's different. I but I feel like that. I think to be fair, it's a tool that could be used for the good and the bad. Except some people, they don't have the ability to decide when it's being constructive or destructive. You know what I mean? Like sometimes if you do drugs, everybody knows drugs is bad, but sometimes when you get dependent and addicted to something, you might not yourself alone be able to get out of that situation. And this is the stuff that worries me. So I'm all about augmenting and AI and what have you, but I think it needs to be in more constructive way. So for instance, instead of like using this app, my big idea is to have my um, AR uh, avatar companion that's actually trained on all my notes, all my things that I want to talk about and learn about and basically knows me from and able to give me advice. How can I improve myself in my life and not build like this dependent relationship, but basically how can I use AI to do self-reflection in real time that helps me make decisions in my life that help me to like get ahead. Like for instance, if I have goals about, you know, reaching a certain weight, they could be like, hey, like, what did you eat today? Oh, maybe you shouldn't have. Like, like stuff that always relates back to real life and things that, so like my progress will be uh, uh, measured in the things that I accomplish in real life, not my interaction with my AR avatar. Paul, million dollar idea. You call it Jiminy Cricket. Yes. And that's yes. the AI for you. Oh, which uh, I have two billion dollars ideas. Uh, which this is a lot of people like. Why am I learning C sharp? Why am I using Unity with uh, <laughs> VR and AR? Uh, because it's fun, but also because I'm like, I have a daughter. She loves me. I know she'll never leave me alone and always come visit me <laughs> in a convalescent home. But for the chance that she doesn't, 
I want to have this AR app which allows me somebody to enjoy on backup. my time. I love you, Marissa, but I'm just being exactly. like, I know you'll come visit me. I won't need it. It's not for me, but but I'll have some sort of way to have like good time in the convalescent home. Then my second idea was for people that have uh, Alzheimer's. And obviously, I don't expect them to walk with Quest 3s on their face. I'm hoping that technology will shrink, but have this ability for them to have contextual information provided based on the people that interact so they could kind of have some context where they are and not feel lost. Um, and obviously, my backup is uh, create a you know a companion that just is a female that I could talk to because I'm <laughs> Uh, but that's you know that's whatever Don't forget that one. either here or there yeah so it turns out 2023 or 2024 or 2025 or whenever this stuff happens because who knows when this is going to happen is the year that um netflix decides to add retail space while best buy quits selling physical media all in the same time this weird this is weird like i don't know it's like a crossover right it's like <laughs> it's like it's like this weird crossover so so Netflix said in 2025, they're going to open a brick and mortar stores called Netflix House. You're going to be able to shop for merchandise, eat at themed restaurants, see live entertainment, and they say participate in immersive experiences surrounding Netflix shows. So they're going to open two locations in the US. I don't know where these are going to be. I imagine one's going to be LA and one's going to be at like Disney Springs or something. You I just have this feeling. Like, Cartersville, like, North Carolina, like, Kevin? I think it's coming yeah. to Cartersville. <laughs> yeah. The tech capital of the world. Yeah, maybe. Maybe or New Utah, York. For sure. right. That's that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There'll be one East Coast, one West Coast. I just imagine that's going to be where they're going to be. We don't know yet. They haven't said. Yeah. So, um, and, and meanwhile, while this is going on, Best Buy have announced that they are going to quit selling Blu-ray and DVDs mm. in store and online in early 2024. So, and at the same time, well, recently Netflix also um, stopped shipping physical media. Right? They stopped shipping DVDs out uh, in September. I think it was when they stopped shipping those. Um, if you were lucky enough, by the way, if you were still uh, a Netflix subscriber at that time, they basically sent out a bunch and said, "Hey, you can keep yeah. those. Like they just <laughs> you which, can keep them. Yeah. <laughs> you keep it whether you want it or not. There's like it's a good way for them to like I don't know. We don't want to have to deal with the plastic waste. Right. So here you go. Please keep <laughs> those. Keep I wonder what the <laughs> oldest rental is. I wonder if, if someone said I've had this for 15 years. You know, oh, I wonder that what that would be crazy. Probably. I wonder what I'm that sure would have cost is. them. I know. I bet but there is. I, like, I just wonder talk- who the yeah. oldest person is. They just. They yeah. held out. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been around for 25 years. So, what if somebody kept one from the beginning? That would have been great. Like, <laughs> it's like the million dollar DVD at this point, right? right? It's like, go on well, eBay. I don't know how much it would have cost you. If you were a subscriber for 25 years, I don't know what that would have cost you, but There's I mean, no way tens it's of thousands for sure. Years. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, calling Sarah. Shenanigans we're old. On that. <laughs> no, I'm calling shenanigans on that because I remember, I, I think I've said this on the podcast before. I was gifted a year Netflix subscription from being on a game show um, back in like, I want to say like 2001, maybe um, 2001, 2002. And at that time it was brand new. Like, I, I don't I've know that. Maybe they existed in before. some other like format before that, or they were testing before I'm that. I'm just saying it's know. 2024 in January. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's not that far off. <laughs> you do the math. I'm, like, I'm sure it's close to 25 years, but it's not like it's a little less 25 than 25 years. years. Yeah. So, don't Semantics. Like more than 25 years. <laughs> Listen, I just started buying records BS. again. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's going to make some of these things collectible. DVD steelbooks are going to be collectible. I think I'm going to pick up a few. Yeah, maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's the thing. I don't know. So um, the the way I see this is like, Netflix is trying to uh, become Disney, apparently. Mm -hmm. They're opening up. I I mean, I was thinking about this this morning when I think about this story. Like, imagine, like, back in whenever it was before Disney Parks opened, right? Disney were making cartoons, right? If they were making cartoons and all of a sudden they they said, you know what we're going to do? Open a theme park. If that happened today, I'd have been like, you guys are insane. That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. You guys make cartoons. What on earth are you going to do with a theme park? That's dumb. So I think the same thing about this, but maybe I'm totally wrong <laughs> because it seems like Netflix just want to expand into other things that isn't the streaming service, right? So maybe they are. Maybe they are literally, they want to be and they are becoming the Disney of the 21st century. So, so here's why this actually works. Um, I was in New York with my friends 
And we went to something called the Friends Experience, if you want to pull that up. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. And it was one of the best things I did when we were in New York. I had so much fun just being in like these, you know, apartments. It looked exactly like I was in the apartment. Um, like it, the, the chit, the couch isn't that great, but yeah, then it had all these like, um, you know, outfits from the show and like, and a, and a real life coffee shop, like, and you're sitting there, like I have a ton of pictures, but like, like you're sitting in Monica's apartment and you're sitting in, uh, and you're, you're lifting a, ch- uh, uh, a <laughs> a couch, couch up the stairs and saying pivot. <laughs> so it was so much fun just being like immersed in that experience. And I can totally see that. Like, you know, there was retail stuff, like, so you could buy different things from this, like, you know, Hugsy. I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the show, but like little penguin friend that Joey has, like there, you could buy that. Could you get Smelly Cat, the song? Could you get that? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Smelly Cat's just, you know, playing. (laughs) But it was so much fun to be in that immersive experience. So I can can see see, like, if you want to be in the Stranger Things mall or Mm. like in um, Winona Ryder's house with like the Christmas lights and stuff, like, I could see that being something super fun for like hardcore fans of Stranger Things to like go and experience. So um, I think that's amazing. Like, and then having kind of themed restaurants, just like you were saying with Disney, you know, you go into a Disney restaurant and you are like immersed in that world, like whatever kind of theme that restaurant is. And so if they do it right, like, like friends experience or like, you know, a Disney restaurant, I could see it being really successful. I'm going to tell you where there's a monkey branch in their whole plan is that <laughs> they're going to invest on building out this thing and then they're going to cancel the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then they're going to have to redo it again. And so like, I think it's going to, it's too much, um, uh, but well, I, this, but, this happens at Disney right now, right? They rebrand rides all the time. All the Same time. ride, Same new ride. branding. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Which one and it would be easy for them point? to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. they have the space and then they just keep like a museum exhibit, you know, they just like tear everything yep. down and like and yep. create a new new experience. And then that gives you repeat customers because so this friend's experience is actually coming to Salt Lake City. And I don't really like a I'm not in Let's New York, that. so it doesn't like feel as cool. but. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the one in Salt Lake City. What's, um, what I was going to, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah. No, just so, like, I don't feel the need to go because a, I've already been and B like, it doesn't feel the same because it's in Salt Lake instead of New York where friends is, you know? Yeah. I don't know if a Netflix restaurant works though. Like again, if I was on the board here and they asked me to come in and consult, they should, I don't, I don't know if they have <laughs> enough IP as Disney does to create a theme park and this is like a restaurant so like what is the restaurant what's the idea um it is a branded thing so could you have a watch party for season um stranger things season five and would sure. you go there and yeah, i was talking was the to stranger things restaurant yeah that would be cool yeah that would be cool yeah it's kind of, well yeah, if it's a restaurant cool. yes i mean the, then it's a stranger things thing it's not a netflix thing right um well that's so, just one of their ips yeah one I mean, of them but yeah the Part that scares me about this, and I'm all for it because I'm all about our world run by huge corporations in a dystopian <laughs> society, but the fact that Netflix is stepping in and creating physical brick and mortar stores, that means what's going to happen to the competitor, like, like companies that have similar products that are competing, they're all going to get, you know, uh, destroyed. And so we're going to have these huge corporations that are going to basically meet all of our needs, like Netflix. Um, you know, Amazon, and then what? There's no room for, I mean, you can't compete with those companies. And that's sad, but I think that's kind of like where we're going and we can't, I don't think we could stop it. And so I just saw an interesting show. It's old, I think it's called Electric Dreams. And one of the episodes in the show was um, the world ended and there's few humans live, but there's still like a factory like Amazon, which keeps producing produce. And they just keep dropping it and it's creating a lot of waste. And the humans that survive, they're like, no, this needs to stop. We don't need all this product. Like, and so they come up with this big plan, this big idea to go inside the factory, break in and blow it up. 
once they get there, the twist is they're not human. They are robots. So the factory had an issue. It's like, who's going to consume their products? So they created robots to consume the product. So it's like, again, it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, let's figure out how we could remove humans from the equation. And this is kind of like the trend that uh, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's definitely, uh, I think, could be a possibility if we continue to delegate, you know, corporations to run things and also our relationships to like apps like Replica, where it's like, well, now you don't need to have a real friend. You can have Replica or you don't, <laughs> you know, and so it's kind of interesting. Uh, a little side note there. This for uh, dystopia, you know. Yeah. So, so, what's your guys' take on the physical media going away? You then is that a is that a, is that a problem? I mean, why are they selling records still? I buy you. You, you said I'm you started buy, buy records. I, yeah, I, was actually I, buy, buy I buy records because like vinyl. I, actually, I like vinyl. Yeah, yeah. Because I think there's this the and I was wondering why, and I think there's still that tactile like yep. appreciation you could have with yep. it that's far removed with like a DVD because like. A record, you kind of like, it has grooves on it and you could kind of see them and feel them and you're like, oh, I put this thing on it and it goes through the grooves. And so I get the whole experience and I kind of want to have that. It's, uh, you know, uh, so it does sound different too. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Records do. Um, as somebody who has like 800 DVDs, uh, at my house, we do still buy physical media. It's, you know, kind of like the conspiracy hat, like, you know, say the internet goes away and I still want to watch my movies. <laughs> I don't think it's a conspiracy hat. I think that's yeah. a thing. Yeah, that's I think that did you, one, like Paul said plenty of times, you're one, renting the, the thing, solar whether you're buying it away. or not. If it's digital, you're not oh, yeah, yeah. really buying it. <laughs> what, what I think is true, my, my son's a film major and uh, he talks about where they have taken movies that were filmed originally and then they re-release them, but then they edit them. So you can see a minor one was with Star Wars was redone. And he hates the one that were redone, even though George Lucas does that. He wants to see the original one the way it was meant to be seen. So a lot of times owning the physical media is also owning history, where that if yeah. it's just digital, it can be True. changed, it can be modified. And that's not the way that we experience Star Wars A New Hope, you know? Yeah, um, I had the like original VHS for A New Hope. Or, no, 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 no. R- Return of the Jedi <laughs> <laughs> that um, that has, you know, the real Darth Vader at the end instead of like yeah. uh, Hayden Christensen, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so stuff like that. Exactly. Like you can't get that, you know, and then there's shows that um, have episodes that get canceled. There's some episodes of yeah. 30 Rock that aren't available on streaming because yep. um, family guy sensitivity similar. and yeah. So having the physical media means like you, it won't change. I like what you said there, Bobby, with the you own history. Well, they re-edited it, and so where Greedo shot Han and then Han shot back, where in the original movie Han shot first. So right, and it just made people crazy. I know that's like a minor thing to get upset about, but like that's not originally how it was made at the time, you know. So right. I just don't have a VHS player to play those movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other piece of tech we can right. get back. <laughs> but with the physical media, like, well, so I, I'm not that mad at Best Buy because I really don't no even go there. It. Yeah. No, I, and I, I totally agree. Um, like, cause I, we still buy physical media, but I'll just buy it on Amazon. I get it the day it's released. You know, it's super but easy. This is kind of one of the, at least in the US, one of the big four the kind of sole physical media is going away. This leaves you with three. What's right. to stop Walmart, to stop Amazon? To I mean, the, the, the story details that one of the actual producers of the media is shutting down. Mm-hmm. They produced it for over 30-something years, and now they're closing. They're not going to make DVDs anymore. Yeah. So it's just, it, you know, the producers are actually going away. So there's going to be a point where I think they all stop selling it, Yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. I, I mean, think it becomes a niche product like, like vinyl did. And it becomes this niche product where they just don't make it anymore. Through the nineties, uh, the, some of the some of the uh, vinyl from the nineties is so expensive because they didn't make that much of it. It was very niche. Some records never came out, or they had very very limited vinyl release. You try and find some of the stuff from the nineties, um, it's impossible to find on vinyl if they didn't reissue it because people just weren't buying it. I think we're going to hit that with DVDs and stuff. There's going to be a point where it just doesn't see a release, and we just just only the maybe the big stuff gets released. Um, and, and if you're a cinephile be- um, and you have a good Blu-ray, it does sound and look better than stream. Even if you're streaming on 4K on Apple's service, 
it's still it, compressed. Yeah, yeah, it's still compressed. And then if you're looking at anything on Netflix, it's like it's awful. <laughs> like comparatively, like potato to quality. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> what, what is what am I looking at? And then so like, and that's and then growing up with a film major in my house, you know, when you watch a movie like The Revenant, and you have to watch that on disc, you have to. Like it's like when you see it, you know, it's all filmed in natural light and all these kind of things that went into that film. It's just like it's so much. It's just a but, different experience. Or you but see I think the, the deal is you're in a very, very small minority. 100%. Yeah, I know. It's 97, 98, 99% of people will watch it on Netflix and right. never know the difference. So they're only going to cater to the majority, and that's just going to be the way it is. They don't care about the 2% that want to buy the DVD because it's better quality or the Blu-ray or whatever it is. They just don't. It's, it, I agree with you. I, I know I'm in that minority, but that's why I'm buying, like, I'm going to buy a bunch of movies my top 30 in DVD, I think of movies of all time. And I have most of them already, but like, I want to make sure that I have them all. And yeah, that sounds same. Weird. yeah. No, I, I have shelves upon shelves downstairs <laughs> of, of DVDs that we'll never get rid of. I mean, I've already, I've ripped them all. We rarely open the package because I've ripped them all and put them on my Plex server. But like for the rare, like, you know, when I want to watch an Avengers movie or something, I will put the disc in or you know or a a pixar cartoon just because that's yep. so crisp like i want to put the disc in for that too but for the most part i'm just watching it on plex because i've ripped them all yeah right. plus i mean but you own it though that's the thing you own right. the disc yep. you own the rip you, it's never going to go away for you you right. can always re-rip it if you want to whatever um if you buy the music on let's just say if you buy the movie sorry on let's just say apple Right, mm -hmm. you buy the movie through Apple, and you can go pay twenty five bucks or whatever it costs these days for the for the new releases, and you buy it. What's to say that that's going to be there in yeah. twenty years? No, Apple's as, dropped as a service that no longer yeah. exist. On they quit streaming them. Yeah, sure. What? Yeah, uh, Apple yes. has done it with games. I mean, I don't have Apple Steam. TV, so I don't care. But that's shocking to me, actually. Yeah. That's I it. think that's common across all of them. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you, they can lose you, the rights to stream them. Yeah. Right, right, but I'm saying like when you purchase it from them, not yeah. when you stream it from them. When you purchase it, yeah. So I but use here, Voodoo. Here. I use Voodoo, and I have like I know I bought something, and it's no longer there. Yeah, yeah. Like right. I know yeah. it happens I on all of them. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's that part of it. But what if the service just goes away? Right? right. What if like what if Apple isn't a company in twenty, Amazon. thirty years? They just yeah, any of them, right? right? Mm -hmm. any, like they go away. What happens? Yeah. That's it. it. Your entire collection is gone. You come to my house and borrow my DVD. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Plex or server. You just give us gonna... the URL to it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we're going to use AI tools to tell us stories like back in the yeah. day. Back in the day, there was a movie, Total Recall. Let me tell you a story. Sit Except give it a happy play. ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. The sixth day. Yeah. Give me a give me a mashup of the sixth day and Total Recall, yeah. somebody, and the AI is like same movie. Done. And, yeah. man, when, that was really hard for me. But, okay, man, Kevin, you just sparked my idea. Like when video AI becomes better, having movie mashups would be yes. sick. Would yes. be sick. Well, I agree. Commando's the perfect movie, so you can't change that one. <laughs> no, <laughs> give me the story of Commando, but the visuals of Blade Runner. Yeah, like, be great. Oh my this, god, that would be, be amazing. amazing. Oh. <laughs> but if you do want a movie experience, go watch Phantom Menace on disc and listen to it. If you have a surround sound system, it sounds different. It's especially yeah. the pod race scene. Um, we watch that every time I get a new receiver. That's the disc we stick in to see if it's nice. if it's um, calibrated correctly. We put in a Rush DVD. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like okay. the drums just go like. Yeah. like. <laughs> okay, let's talk about our recommendations then. I'm just going to go around the room. Uh, Bobby, what you got first? So um, this week, um, I found a thing that's been out for a minute. It's called the 3M Claw. And now I feel like, uh, you know, like I can hang any picture anywhere and I'll come to people's house as long as they have the claw and do it for them. But the 3M Claw is like an amazing thing that can hang a pitcher that's up to 65 pounds. And so some of the art we have in here, I don't know if Kevin's probably picked it up here. They, they come in frames and they're really thick frames. We had them kind of, we have comic posters that have been framed. And some of those weigh 45 pounds or more. And like they fell off the wall here. And so I found the claw. You don't have to have um, anchors. It doesn't have to go into studs. Um, the thing that I really like about it more than anything is like in here in a commercial building, when you're hanging things, 
you may not know this, but the studs are metal. And so like they're very thin metal. So you have to drill through them and use these butterfly hooks to put them in. And it's a pain. And this, you just push it in and man, it'll hold anything up to 65 pounds. It's crazy good. Easy to do. Anyone can do it. And like, um, I just like, I just like, it's my product of the year. I mean, like, uh, you know, it's like, it's crazy cool. You know, Bobby's got bicycle in his pockets. Go yeah. Like, here, let me, uh, you, you should put a picture here. Let me show you something. Let me show you how to do this. Yeah, I'm going to hang a picture for you. Because we use the command strips. Like, I mean, this whole wall back here is like all like brought to you by command strips. But we had, we have like the constitution framed yeah. downstairs and it fell off the wall and right. shattered, oh. like oh, got glass no. everywhere. Mm-hmm. And we haven't put it back up yet. It's like in our garage right now. And I'm like, oh. So it's better than monkey hook, Kevin. I've tried. Okay, that's what I was going to say. I've I've tried these. I've used these. These are kind of interesting. I've definitely used these at home the, before. The claw is better better than the monkey hook. The claw is way better, easier to do. Um, it has the same concept that it's it's yep. kind of curved, and yep. so the you know it's just a a force where you're not going to rip through the you know vertically or horizontally off the sheetrock, and so it'll hold anything down pressure down. But it has to come through the wall to come out, so it's it's really cool. So the monkey hook is really nice. good, but the claw I think is a better product. I would go yeah, with the claw. I'm so excited right now, good. Bobby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> looks good. These are cool. Okay, Sarah, what you got this week? Okay, well, all of this talk about replica made me think of my favorite app because it kind of sounds similar, and is that's Paprika. If you go to Paprika app, it with a lives- with a K. Yes, with a K. <laughs> okay. Can you spell paprika with a C? I, I don't know. Well, who knows with an app oh. these days? Oh replica isn't with a K, is it? You know, <laughs> so I never know with app names all over the place. Yeah. Go ahead. This is a recipe <laughs> manager, basically. So, like, if I find a recipe online, I can just highlight the URL and pull it into Paprika, and it'll pull like the picture and the ingredients and like everything that goes into it. I can plan my meals here, so like I can assign meals to a specific day and generate a shopping right. list, and like so. All of my recipes are stored in Paprika. I can access it from my computer or my phone or my tablet. Like it's available everywhere. And that's a shopping feature. I guess it does have grocery lists. Yeah. 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 You can generate like, so if I create like a meal plan for the week, I can generate my shopping list and then like check off. Like you can even have stuff that you have in the pantry. So if I have like, you know, I, I don't need to buy salt. I don't need to put salt on my grocery list. I put that in my pantry and it won't, bring that into the shopping okay list. oh that's cool yeah yeah. okay cool that's a cool app idea. is it a cost or is it totally free uh yeah there is a cost I, it's very 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 cheap though this like, one's five bucks they yeah you just pay for the one time or subscription per month? It, yeah one time like, one time yeah i think i had to pay for the desktop version and like the app version but like again okay. it was you know maybe 15 bucks total or something Right. Yeah, the oh, yeah. the Mac version bucks. is thirty bucks, but I mean, I'm guessing it's on sale sometimes too. Yeah, yeah, it's super cheap. And that, like I said, that's not a subscription. That's just you've yeah. got it. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. I wonder if the Windows one's the same price. It is. I was wondering. <laughs> you know how that goes? Twenty nine dollars for years. <laughs> yeah, so it might have been cheaper when I first bought it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's thirty bucks on Windows. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. I like it. I like it. Paul, what you got? It's something you already showed, but I'm going to just do it again. It is Paprika. the <laughs> Quest 3. It is fantastic and amazing. And I was surprised like with the past. It's pretty, pretty, pretty nice. And good, right? What's awesome about this, this is a gift that keeps on giving in a sense. It will spark your imagination to try coding and create something cool. And so... I obviously use this like for entertainment, um, but I am also really excited building apps for it. And I think with Unity and C Sharp, anybody could do it. Uh, it's really awesome. Highly recommend. Uh, best thing ever. And if you haven't played yeah, Cyberpunk... We need to meet and, up in the metaverse and play yeah, yeah, a game. Yeah. Oh, that's what we should do. Yeah, we should to- totally do it. Uh, I was going to say, uh, if there are any fans of Cyberpunk, there's a mod for it that allows you to play it in VR. Oh my goodness. It is just beyond. It's amazing. I can't wait for your game awesome. to come out where it's like, you know, the people are coming in through the walls and stuff. Oh, oh my gosh. Like I was actually thinking of that. I want to make a game that scares <laughs> the daylights out of children. I mean, 
But no, yeah. no I have a, 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 a like little Chucky. You open the drawer, Chucky comes Chucky. out. He's like, ah, because it scared me. What? And I'm still like, so if I could give that back. But I I just had so many cool ideas for it. Um, um, yeah. But we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. There was it's a game that cool. my husband played on PS5. Or no, I, it might have been like three or four. I don't remember at this point. But he got scared so bad. Like it was like a jump scare. He literally like tossed his controller like and it <laughs> flew across the room. <laughs> and that was like the funniest thing. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like he got so scared. I can't even imagine how scary. He yeah. Did. Imagine how much more immersive they are in VR. Right. Because they because the VR environment is very much immersive. Like when I'm playing a full VR game, oh I forget where I am. I take the headset off and I was like, oh yeah, yeah. That's you kind of got you do have to reorient. It's it's kind of it is very like you do feel like you are where you are even <laughs> though it's like you know it's obviously can be a computer game but it's definitely the fact that you're in it it is definitely an interesting feeling this is gonna yeah. sound really terrible because you know how much gaming <laughs> i do you? sometimes sometimes <laughs> i do there's this game called fallout 4 they actually yep. have a vr version of it and i have it highly modded and one weekend i binge play the game for like eight hours straight and when wow. i took off the headset real life i thought i was like like that was not real i thought just like it's like putting on a headset for real life. i'm like oh my god i played too yeah. long this is ridiculous the brain uh, does weird things to yeah, you did you do, uh, so you so you and i know you've had previous headsets as well paul but do you remember back to when you first got a headset and first started playing with vr do you remember having an issue with your in reality with your hands yeah 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 all the time did you have yeah. that issue yeah 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 it's yeah. like when you play vr for the first maybe month or so your when you come out of VR, your real hands in the real world because you've used them in a virtual environment don't feel like your real yeah. hands. It's yeah. very weird. You have to retrain your brain. Now I don't notice it, yeah. but somebody like it sparked because somebody on Threads the other day mentioned, "Oh yeah, for new VR players, just remember like your hands are going to feel weird from it." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I remember that now. Like they do. It took a while to get over it because it's something to do with your mind and you're seeing this." representation of your hands and then you see your real hands it's really really trippy and it takes a minute to get over <laughs> that's kind of crazy yeah. yeah it is definitely crazy that's going to be a thing that a lot of people are going to are going to deal with as we move into these things where um you know a, a virtual environment is mixed with our real environment and the depth perception is a weird thing too even on pass through with the new one depth perception is strange i don't know if you've tried typing on your phone with the headset on yet paul yeah yeah it's tough. um it's close, but it's just yeah. off. It's off enough to throw your mind into weird, like, oh, I've really got to think about it. Um, or using the keyboard, it's just off because it's anything that's close to you has like a warped yeah. feeling to it. You get a, about two feet away and that yeah, goes away. Yeah. But the close stuff feels really strange. It's, it's weird. But again, your brain will probably get used to it and you, that'll be a short term issue. Yeah. But it's, it's awesome. I'm all for VR, AR. Yeah, definitely. Mine this week, um, I have not, I've recommended this before, but not explicitly recommended it as my not null. We've talked about it before, but, um, trade coffee subscription. It's great. You can send, you basically, you sign up for this subscription. You can get, um, bags whenever you want them. So you can set like a schedule. You put like a queue together of coffee you want to get. The reason I like it is because it has, um a loads of decaf options i drink decaf coffee so there's tons of different options i get a different bag i have mine set to every 21 days and that's about perfect for me i run out of coffee about every 21 days drinking like one or sometimes two a day but drinking at least one a day so like every you can set it to whatever interval you want it's perfect um the coffee is like super high quality always super fresh and it's from a bunch of different roasters across the country so if you're in the u.s you get stuff from everywhere there's New York roasters, there's East Coast, there's West Coast, there's one from down the street. Like, it's crazy. Do they have tea? Um, Do they have tea? They don't have tea. Oh. No. It's oh, just Kevin's No so black sad. cinnamon tea? All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, unfortunately. <laughs> I only really drink one kind of tea for me, so it's like, I just... There's only one... Person. You're you're English. There's only one kind of tea. <laughs> there's only one kind of tea, yeah. It's just black tea. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, super good. Here's the, here's the cool thing. Right now, you can get a free bag of coffee oh, if you nice. sign up. So the link down in the description will get you a free bag of coffee. It is a referral link, by the way. So it'll get you a free bag of coffee, but it also gives me like 15 bucks, I think, towards my next coffee. But it is literally a free bag with no commitment. And I was like, this is genius. 
Like they're giving away free coffee. These are usually eighteen to twenty dollars. About support somewhere around Kevin's that. habit. There you yeah, go. Support, yeah. Kevin. S- support my habit and get free coffee. Like who doesn't <laughs> want free coffee, right? When I saw this pop up in the app, I was like, "Well, I'm definitely got to recommend this." Like, it's like, like who doesn't love a freebie? Like it, and it's a that usually between I think the twelve ounces, I think bags, something like that. Um, but their their selection is insane, and they keep adding new um new roasters all the time. Like, and it's like I say, it's it's great coffee. It's I've had some really really good ones from here. I've yet to really have a dud. I think they. They must go through some kind of process to make sure that, like, they have good quality stuff. Okay, yeah, that um, makes sense. But yeah, um, yeah, highly, highly recommend. I've been using this now since 2019, I think. Constantly, I've never, I've never quit my subscription. It comes every month, every 21 days. I get a new one. Uh, it's good stuff. Yeah, look, get free coffee. Um, at, so at the end go. of that page, it said I'll, I'll coffee talk, and I went coffee talk with Linda Richmond. <laughs> I'll give you a topic. (laughs) Oh, oh, yeah, there you go. That's funny. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Highly recommend. Can't recommend enough. Counting crows Um, neither count nor are they crows. Discuss. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We didn't get an email this week, unfortunately. No no emails. So, um, come on, Greg. Where are you, Greg? Greg's our lone email. Greg, if you could just send us an email every yeah. week, that would just keep us going. I mean, you just can say whatever you like. I'm gonna, every week. I'm, I'm going to get a replica. I'm going to hook it up to email API. So she can send us a weekly email. Um, we're not going to know that it's not from whatever it is. Julia, your AI companion. For exactly. Exactly. How you um, but if you do want to email us <laughs> next week, if you do want to email us next week, where would they send that email to? Sarah? The not null podcast at AOL.com. That's it. That is correct. At AOL.com. That was everybody. You heard that correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, so and yeah, if you don't get the email. joke, you're going to have to like go back a few episodes. So <laughs> We're going to lose trust in some people at some point because they're just going to see that we have an AOL.com right. email address and be like, these guys talking tech. They have an AOL email address. They know nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are they doing? <laughs> we should make our business card like the AOL discs that we send to people. Yeah. <laughs> that, I think that's cool. Oh, that would be great. We should that extend awesome. that address. The Not Null Podcast. We promise this is a joke at AOL.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe we need to build it in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, that's it for this week. Um, as I always ask, leave us a review. If you want to do that too, that'd be great. Drop us an email. You can do that as well. That'd be awesome. We will, I always try and uh, look at them before, but again, I check this. We've been happy. Uh, but leave us a review. That'd be perfect. We would love that. And we will see you again next week. 